the Rothschild family, a family that owns over 18,000 luxury mansions across the globe, over 100 private jets, 60 luxury yachts, more than 500 passenger and cargo ships. Their gold reserve is worth $45 billion, and it's estimated that their annual income is over $600 billion. Many sources estimate their net worth to be $500 trillion. Family, that is the main target of conspiracy theories, and whose wealth lasted through generations. In this video, we will explore how they climb to this unimaginable wealth, how they keep their money, and the honest truth about their wealth. To understand all that, we need to go to medieval Europe. In that period, religion set the laws, and religion forbade Christians to lend money with interest. The Jews took the opportunity and they passed the business from generation to generation. But it was not easy for the Jewish community. Christianity was widely spread through Europe, and anybody who isn't Christian had a hard time. Jews lived in the ghetto, in Frankfurt, today's Germany, there was a street outside the city with the name Judengasse, or Jewish ally. Back then, houses were distinguished by signs, not numbers, as it is today. And one house had a red shield sign. Rot is red in German, and Schild is shield. Combine it, and you get Rothschild. The family, as any other Jews, were in finance. Rothschilds specialized in exchanging currency and trading collectible coins. Mayor Rothschild took the family business in 1763, and his collection of coins attracted many powerful people in the country. One of these people was Prince Wilhelm of Hesse, who hired Meyer to handle his finances. When Wilhelm became a king, Rothschild became a court Jew. Now, this term looks really controversial, but back then, a Jew that is doing business in finance, that was the biggest position he could get. Every rich aristocrat had a court Jew. When Napoleon attacked Hesse, Meyer was ready. See, Meyer had five sons. He sent each of his sons to major cities to start the same business. One in London, one in Naples, one in Vienna, one in Paris, and the last one stayed in Frankfurt. All of them were mega successful. Now let's get back to Napoleon. When he drove Wilhelm to exile, Meyer sent all of Wilhelm's money to London to his son. Simply said, Wilhelm was founding the British through the Rothschilds to fight Napoleon to restore his power. James Rothschild would become number one banker for Leopold I of Belgium, and Solomon would lend money to the last emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. That same emperor would give the family the title of Baron. The business was extremely successful. Just the Paris branch grew from $5 billion in 1820 to over a half a billion in 1850. When a government would collapse, the Rothschilds were first to provide loans, and they got great profits from that. That great profit lent to investments in other industries. They bought a minority of the Suez Canal, which was an amazing investment, because the Suez Canal's revenue is $15 million per day. In 2021, Carroll revenue was $6.3 billion, the best revenue in Carroll history. Now, Rothschilds take a share from that for years. They bought valuable wine assets in France. In 1883, they invested and developed the first big oil well in Azerbaijan, bought majority shares of the beers, a company that has a monopoly in diamond business, also Rio Tinto, who still is the world's largest mining corporation. These investments from over 200 years ago still bring family millions. But there are also huge falls in the Rothschild family. Last century, everything came down. Firstly, this generation made not so good investing moves. Next, the branch in Naples and Frankfurt hadn't got any male hers to take over the business, so they closed the business. Naples branch left everything to Paris and the Frankfurt branch left everything to Vienna. Speaking of Vienna, after an angry German painter came to power and invaded Austria, the Rothschilds needed to sell their banking business there for a fraction of what it's worth. Louis Nathaniel was captured and needed to pay $21 million for his freedom, which is now $370 million. The painter evaded Paris, where a branch of the Rothschilds business was. Nazis seized their mansions and everything they owned. They owned a lot of art because for the Rothschild, art was a symbol of wealth. Over 5,000 artworks were taken. The painter himself took some. After the war ended, Rothschilds tried to restore the Paris branch, but the French nationalized their bank in 1981. Rothschilds are also famous for inbreeding. 
They married their cousins to keep the wealth in the family. But that was normal back then for wealthy people. They don't do that anymore. Hopefully. This century, Rothschilds did some great moves and were in great positions. They invested heavily in some companies. Maybe you've heard of some of them. The names are Apple, Starbucks, Meta, etc. Sir Evelyn Rothschild was a private advisor for Queen Elizabeth and his personal wealth was calculated to be $20 billion. After his retirement, David René Rothschild took the lead and merged the Paris and England business into one entity. He also made a giant network of shell companies to hide the family's full wealth. Those shell companies are untraceable, so we can't know the full size of the Rothschild's family wealth. What we know is that they have properties across the globe, thousands of real estate objects in which there are a lot of mansions and villas, hundreds of private jets, cargo and passenger ships. There is no way to calculate the right number. Rothschilds are the biggest gold owners in the world, owning not only gold bars, but gold mines also. Sources say that their net worth is from 500 billion to 500 trillion. But as I said, there is no way to calculate that. These are just speculations. Their investments bring them millions. Just investments from the past bring them a huge amount of income. More than 90% of families lose wealth by the third generation. Look, it's hard to be responsible with money when you are born with tons of money. But the Rothschilds are masters of that. The older generation teaches younger generations. And they hide their private life and their wealth amazingly. Except real estate, finance, banking and almost every industry, Rothschilds are big philanthropists donating a lot of objects to museums, building churches, schools, and donating a lot of money to the Jewish community. But a lot of conspiracy follows the Rothschilds, that they own the world and they control it. A lot of this is because of anti-Semitism. But this is a business channel, not a conspiracy channel, so we will stay out of that. Rothschilds pioneered wire transfer, foreign exchange, and international bond insurance. They are the biggest banking family in the world whose wealth can't be measured. They have huge investing powers so they can set trends and they are investing in a lot of things so we will see if they will rise or maybe will they fall i hope you enjoyed this video while doing this research it was really hard because a lot of the content was based on conspiracy theories so it was really hard to distinguish what is real and what is a conspiracy theory but if you enjoy business content and business stories please consider subscribing